Tom, you know, like in, in, in North America, you work through lobbyists who are law firms, and you have relationships. I mean, we can talk to the chief of staff at the White House anytime we want. Just you want you want to be careful with all this because it's all recorded. Every every telephone call that the chief of staff to the White House has has to be recorded. You know, and it's not that they tape the call. It's just that it's recorded that he had a call with Tom Collier, the CEO of Pebble Limited Partnership. And so you don't want to be seen to be being trying to to exercise undue influence. It's better for us if if we want to push that envelope that Tom talks to the governor of the state of Alaska and the governor of the state of Alaska picks up the phone and calls the chief staff of the White House. Yes. More more government to government than necessarily ourselves. More lawyers talking to the lawyers in the White House. Um, the governor I count as a friend. I did in my home the largest fundraiser, private fundraiser for the governor when he was running for office. Um, and uh, it's not unusual for the governor to call me. I've flown down to Juneau, which is about half the year where the governor is. He spends about half the year in Anchorage and half the year in Juneau. But I've flown down to Juneau where the governor's mansion is and had private dinners with him in the mansion. Um, so the governor and I are, uh, are pretty, uh, pretty good friends. And like I said, we talk on a regular basis. The governor's chief of staff, uh, Ben Stevens, um, we, um, about, God, Ron, how long ago was it? Three or four years ago, we formed what we called the Pebble Advisory uh, Committee. We reached out to important politicians and environmentalists and, and uh, native leaders in the state and brought them into a, a committee that would advise me personally on how best to go forward with this Pebble project. And Ben Stevens, was on our Pebble Advisory Committee before the governor got elected and he was requested by the governor to come in and be chief of staff. Now in a lot of states, frankly, the chief of staff is more important than the governor, right? The governor has to be out there uh, playing politics and kissing babies where the chief of staff is sitting at his desk running the state government. And that's a guy who was on the Pebble Advisory Committee. Sure, the state of Alaska is every bit as supportive, if not more supportive, of us as each day goes by. And that's for two reasons. Um, one is, the state of Alaska is in a uh, seriously threatening uh, fiscal crisis here. I don't know if you know much about how state government works in Alaska, but Alaska is one of the very few states in America that does not have an income tax. So the only way that the government really raises money is off of the tax it imposes on the oil and gas industry per barrel of oil, essentially. And you know what's happened to the price of oil in the last year or so. Um, and that has had two impacts. First of all, it's reduced the tax because the price of oil has gone down so far. But second, it's reduced our production because it no longer is profitable to produce oil. So we have deficits up here of billions of dollars, um, and the state can't borrow money um, to cover its deficits. It's got to come up with it every year. And so we're, we're looking at a, uh, you know, a potential bankruptcy of the state in just another couple of years here. Um, and the only way to fill that gap, uh, the state now believes, is essentially through mining revenue. And we're the biggest game in town with respect to that. So they're really um, supporting us because of their monetary needs. And secondarily, um, every day that we get closer to getting our record of decision, it's easier politically for the government to be more vocal in its support. They've always been supportive behind the scenes, but more vocal. So this mitigation plan that we're putting together um, Almost all of the land is state land. The state has to be a partner with us. And what we're going to do with that land is we're going to turn it into uh, a preserve. We're going to set it aside, put a conservation easement on it. And so that like a park, like, like a big park, similar, similar to a park. And, and, uh, and that will be available for hunting and fishing only in Alaska. And, and we, we would not be able 
to respond positively to this letter we got today if the state weren't there as our partner moving forward with this plan. And they are, okay? And uh, we're moving through that. Put a, put a fine, fine note on that. Just between us guys, I had a nearly two hour one-on-one -on -one meeting with the governor when all of this came up about a month ago to walk him through this, to get his commitment that they would be there. And now we're working with his Department of Natural Resources uh, and they are being very cooperative and working this through with us.